Hello, welcome to number five, season two of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Coming up, Carl's going to teach us all about Sigmund Freud. No, we're not, we're not doing that. Well, no, yes, we, we are, are, because last yeah. week we promised people that you'd research yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah, but I, I had a look, but uh, I didn't find him that interesting, so. But that's not. But this is this is what irrelevant. I mean. This is what we were talking about. You you say you wish you could go back and learn stuff in school because you didn't. You want knowledge. You always say about you want to learn. Yeah, some I want to learn something interesting every day. Yeah, but you've got that. Uh, I gave him. I had a look at the website. It, it just oh oh sigmundfreud dot com. Yeah, he started that. I just didn't had he? a look. I just I did a search on like famous quotes from philosophers. quotes. Brilliant. That get you everything you need. A quote. That's well, I, don't, a, I don't need to know his history. That sums just, up a man's life work. A quote. No, but that's what you remembered for, isn't it? Churchill will go on the beaches and all that. <laughs> uh, Sigmund. Didn't really have any any sort of catchphrases, is what yeah, you mean? Yeah, that's, yeah, things that you hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. soundbites. Yeah. He, he wasn't good with the press. <laughs> Brilliant. So you haven't well, bothered to learn about him. Well, you didn't even pick up a book. I wouldn't know where to start. Do you feel like you're thinking in your head? Sometimes, like then, I was, but I don't know if I am because it's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? <laughs> I did look at some of the things that he'd said, and the one Do it now! Do it now! Why, what have you learned about Freud? Okay, here we go. This is Carl Educates Ricky and Steve, number one, Sigmund Freud. Carl, tell us what you learned about Sigmund Freud. Right. All I remember oh. was that like he said, a baby, you, know, you look at a little baby having some milk from its mum's breast, right? He looks well happy. Uh, it has enough. It's full up. Uh, it goes to sleep. It's got a smile on its face, right? He said, <laughs> "That's what happens when you're older as well." That's all I remember from all the things <laughs> that he was saying on his thing. He just said it's weird how like it's, absolute. It's like, now, to be fair, Rick, that is obviously in translation. Yeah, I know. From the original, so I don't want you. No, I'm not having a go at Freud. Him, but, you know. I'm not, I mean, Freud has been discredited on on some issues, and we've moved on with experimental psychology and and. But and that's what that's the you. one that was interesting. I don't quite follow. So, what do you take from that? Explain that to us in layman's terms. Um, I don't know. You... Well, that's pointless. Without application, knowledge is pointless. But it's not knowledge, is it? He's just saying drink milk all your life. It's good for you. Can't no, he's not it. saying drink milk all your life. What <laughs> is this? Is this an advert he's doing he now? He also came up with go to work on an egg. Yeah. Oh, Christ almighty. But, but like I said, I wasn't that impressed by, uh, by his, by his work. So. Unbelievable. Carl is allowed to vote. <laughs> I know, He's yeah. allowed to cast a vote That's in this true. country. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. I wish I hadn't. I've only done it once and look what happened. I got called up for jury duty. <laughs> not doing it again. People do what they do anyway. It's, I think they only let us vote, so they, so we feel like we're having a say in what's going on. But really, it just carries on, doesn't it? I haven't seen a big change. But that's exactly why you vote. No, the best thing you can do is look after yourself. Get on with it. Brilliant. Okay, well, I, I hope that's a quote. I hope someone out there who's, uh, you know, maybe making a, a dictionary of quotes or an encyclopedia and they, they've finished with Freud, they've done Freud, they've done Pavlov, he hit a dog on the head with a stick, next, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, what would, what do you say about the world? Just get on with it. Mm. Well, we're not, in, we're not in charge of it, is what I'm saying. That's nearly it? as good as, let's go to the beach. <sighs> Winston spoke, Churchill. I spoke to my dad about it, and he, he called up saying, oh, I'm sick oh, of well, we're gonna about get this. Some quality thinking here. Go on. <laughs> go on. No, he was saying uh, about global warming and that. Yeah. He was saying he's sick of hearing about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's just the world in it. We're all getting old, and the world's getting old. That's, that's the end of it. Brilliant. What an, another amazing quote. Well, it is. What, what, what we're trying to do. This is what I'm saying about we don't like people to get old. We're always saying, oh, we can change that face, we can lift your chin up, we can put a wig on you. And Why are you so annoyed about people wanting to live a little bit longer? Because enough's enough, is what I'm saying. The world, the world's the same. It's just getting old and, <sighs> you know, it used to have more green on it, but now it's gone a bit bald. So it hasn't got as much green, it's got more soil. Treat the world like a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing quote. Treat the That's world no, like you, a head. You've actually come up with one there. Um, I thought of another phrase you could you know, just just sit in here talking to you, flogging a dead horse. Yeah. What do you what do you think that means? Flogging a dead horse. 
a number of people are still amazed by your complete lack of understanding some of these famous uh, sayings and phrases. So, well, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's that's like uh, you know, get get a new get a new horse or um, mm. no, he hasn't got it. No one's going to buy it. No, it doesn't mean that sort of flogging. And you're hitting it. Yeah. Right. So what's the point in hitting it? So it's dead anyway. So don't bother hitting it. It's absolutely, not feeling it's pointless. Anymore. It's a wa- It just means it just means it's a waste of time. Yeah, but it depends what that horse has done to you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it does. It's that thing, innit, of like, a, if a bear attacked you mm. and you managed to hit it on the head and it went down, you'd go and you'd be annoyed. You'd still have built up aggression. You'd give it an extra clout. That's Again. extraordinary. I don't know who's compiling this book. Sometimes um, it's worth flogging a dead horse if he did something to you, if he annoyed you. Carl, I've got a couple of little facts for you, just to try and in- inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yeah. So what, wh- how have they found that out? Well, I don't know, but... But I've I've never heard of any fish having cancer though. I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? <laughs> Good point. Okay. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. What? Because it's it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out or. Is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with... It, it, I mean, w- what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. Right. It was, uh, just a little bee. <laughs> She'd been out, um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. <laughs> she was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of, like, the bed sheet or whatever it was. Yeah. And, um, she's in the kitchen with it, and she goes, look at that. Little bee there, she's like sort of stroking its, stroking its head. And it loved it. <laughs> How you didn't make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't, he wasn't struggling, it was just sat there like, cos it must have been like a bit dozy, they get a bit dozy, don't they, in the, uh, in the heat and that. Mm. And, uh, he just stayed there on the sheet and she sort of stroked its head for a bit. And she had to put it out, it didn't go out, it didn't try and escape. It was like, you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> that was that was that. She sent it out. <laughs> she loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had Harry the house fly. What? Said, Harry the house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right. It's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. How yeah. do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, "Oh, it's back." Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl. What makes you think it was a pet housefly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't harming us. It's just. It just always hung about. It's but bad. how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like we think in another fly is getting a bit of free rent or something, just, no, but, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why? why no, well, no. I d- right. Okay. You in a house, right? There's flies. Okay. Not flies. Fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies, at no point was there a crossover period where there's two and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean, it was always just one on its own. <laughs> we just thought, leave it, it's alright. I don't know why, you, why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. He it just was. Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? Well, all right, I don't, but I'd, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they'd made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing... Okay, this is this is incredible, glasses. Steve. Can I, can I take over? Hang on, let me just, just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So, he's got... There's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses. Yeah. So that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of 
we, we're looking after everything now, aren't we? Sorry, I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the saw story. It. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly with a pair of glasses, glasses right? on. Yeah. Right. It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had. As an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses small enough to fit on a heart. They put it on there and they've taken a picture of it, and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually because the fly had bad eyesight. The fly was presumably dead. It was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you drawn the uh, glasses on there, <laughs> there <you go. laughs> and he believed it. Like there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what do you think of that, though? But they well, did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. No. But why would they bother making glasses for it? And they've got a compound eye. They'd have to make about a thousand pairs of glasses for a fly. It's just, it's just that thing, in it, of human nature is something's wrong with something. Let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? <laughs> When you, no. you know, we are. We're always doing it. <laughs> we're always trying to help people out instead of just going. You've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> we're always fiddling. Always fiddle about. It's like that bit about um, uh, what was it? Is th th you see, this is technology going mad and that. Um, they're doing operations on people, right? Um, and instead of inject sort of injecting you with uh, stuff that knocks you out, they're going to hypnotise you and uh, they, they operate on you when you're hypnotised, but you're still awake, so you're sat there awake, mm. you're aware of what's going on around you, mm. but you can't feel anything because someone's hypnotised you. Why are we messing about with that when there's nothing wrong with the injection? Well, there are. I mean, it's not it's not healthy to constantly give someone very dangerous. Yeah, very but dangerous you just time. you just said it yourself there constantly. If, yes, you, if they keep you coming in having operations stuffed on up, someone, don't be doing multiple operations. But sometimes you need to. Why? Because of whatever the complaint it. may be. Yeah, but we, but no, not multiple. Give them one or two max. After two, it's like enough's enough. We've operated on you. We fixed that. We fixed that. We're not fixing anymore because it's just going to be there's going to be something else wrong with you because you're getting old. Like the world, get on with it. That's that's what I'm saying. Stop sort of ploughing stuff into it. Like I've said before about a car. You know the gearbox is gone. All right, we'll replace it. Oh, exhaust. Well, all right, we'll put an exhaust on it. Oh, the oil filter. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. <laughs> Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with ink? Yeah. They, they can do it, not with ink. With coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used, uh, as, as plasma. But yeah. I haven't had that verified, because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. I've, I've seen facts like, uh, the Impala's fur is just nearly the same colour as grape juice, <laughs> which, I <laughs> yeah. don't know what that, who's that aimed at. <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's so... Uh, well, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort well, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well... Uh, no, 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 but that's, that's not, not being open-minded. Open-minded is, is, uh, being open to the facts that, you know, the possibility. Open-minded isn't uh, believing everything you hear. You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it, a lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form, but a according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? But we, but we know that's impossible, don't we? 
Um, depends where he was. If he was Which above one? a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem a with that. A zoo hasn't got, hasn't got one percent of all animal species. No, but they've got more. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right. That's these these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite... Yeah, quite yeah but big, exactly. Really. But, you're, but you're, you're right. You're questioning it. Le, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. But what are you talking about, a zoo? As I said, there's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where you got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did they keep them all? How did they keep them all separate? How did they... At that point... Oh, no, the uh, lions at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in it Don't in a bad situation. Don't talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God. You know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right. So there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? they what do you mean? On another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big? big. It's big. It's a big boat. Hey, how long... What was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It was a couple of weeks. He probably had, um, the Extreme Makeover Home Edition team. Uh, they, they all chipped in. Probably had Queer Eye for a Straight Guy helping him out with some of the... The, the interior design elements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, two of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big. Because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, then next there, two elephants, and it just, and, and it's just like, it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, Weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on, but when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you, are you saying that you wouldn't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered, and they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> Chimpanzee, that he's running down again, you fucking! <laughs> That's the jingle for uh, excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all uh, legitimate stuff. Ricky and I have had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now, I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it? For her yeah, birthday, it was he went to the Cotswolds. Yeah. So I just went for one night. He got the car and headed off. We stopped at a service station to get some breakfast. We had fried toast with an egg on it, one sausage and beans, twice. Cost us £13.85. They sell everything separate, so it seems cheap. At that price, we must have been charged for each bean. <laughs> we found the B&B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B&B, &B, so we had a quick walk around the car park <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday. <laughs> the room was now ready. It's an all right room. Free biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> like a child. <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. <laughs> no, 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 oh, I'm, 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 I'm. get off the bed, not on the furniture. <laughs> the room overlooked the car park that we'd already been round. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring at the window. Remember when we went there? <laughs> we'd always have the car park. Oh, yeah. oh God! The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> Don't think they are needed. Um, we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner and went on another walk. There was a field that was there just for birds to live on. We couldn't see any, so we went to the pub. Headed back to where we were staying for our dinner, I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of 13 behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. It was only about 11. He thought he was it. 
<laughs> I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did not. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. <laughs> Slave. I would love that ad campaign. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, God. The new Vauxhall Slug. <laughs> we had a look around the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look around the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> So, Su Suzanne's had it all the time so far. She's gone to the Cotswolds, the room wasn't ready, she's seen the car park, an empty field, and they'll, let's go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do That's that every time you, you go do, away? It, I like the fact, I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. Did she just look? Like, she went to a club, I don't know what time. No, she just looked out at the car park, just like, memories. <laughs> That's, that's what you do, though, isn't it? When you go to these places, there's nothing else unless you want fudge. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk around the church graveyard and, oh, and have a look. Like there's fudge. nothing. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants, and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. <laughs> Talking, I was just intrigued to know because Rob from Burton on Trent uh, has sent this in, and he wants to know that because he's just started seeing someone, and he wants to know what your advice, Carl, is on how to keep her happy. You know, he's just started a relationship with someone. He wants to know what what your advice would be to keep her happy because, you know, I mean, he won't have heard that you took Suzanne on that wonderful trip to the Cotswolds. So, what's your sort of your advice really for someone who's perhaps just started a relationship? I, don't, I, I mean, you've been with Suzanne for what nine years? Ages. Mm. I don't think you should. Um have to go out of your way to please them because then it's not the right person. Mm. I think you should just do what you want and then if they like it then they're the right ones for you. Mm. So don't don't go out of your way too much. I mean I got the posh badge for a birthday. Mm. Uh, that's once a year. Um, rest of the time it's kind of like, you know, I, I, I like weird stuff. I like watching weird stuff and all that. Um, now and again I won't make her watch it. I'll, I'll tape it. <laughs> Amazing advice. But sometimes <laughs> this is amazing advice. Sometimes you just say, "No, come on, the bloke with the two heads on. I want to watch it live." Uh, <laughs> so give and take is what you're saying there. That's all. It's, it's, it shouldn't be hard. As soon as it's hard, it's not right. So just uh, just go about your business. See if she joins in. Brilliant. Another quote for the book. Woke up to the Commonwealth Games on the radio. Now, what are you making of the Commonwealth Games? Is that something that interests you? Are you a sports fan? Um, I, I'm not really. I mean, Suzanne's, uh, sort of been getting up early, especially to watch it. Um, you know how I feel about a lot of it. Um, it just seems to be sort of wasted. If people are running fast, use it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than just try to beat your own record or someone else's, do something where you do have to run. If you're a good swimmer, be a lifeguard. Don't be messing about going up and down. I was swimming recently, I do a lot of swimming, and I've never quite mastered my front crawl. Just never quite nailed the breathing, because it's quite tricky, isn't it? You know, you've yeah. really got to breathe at the right moment. And um, so I'm in the swimming pool in the local gym, and there's a guy bombing up and down, really doing a great forward stroke. So I uh, waited till he came up, and sort of went, uh, <laughs> excuse me, mate. Um, <clears throat> I was just watching you when you were doing your front crawl. I was really impressed. Could you just watch me? When I do mine, why and tell me if I'm going why wrong. Why would you go to a man? I know, and that was what I. Th that was the problem. Is only as I was saying it did I realise what it sounded like. I've just been watching you yeah. swimming up and down. I was really and, impressed. And you're both in speedos. <laughs> both in speedos. You know, I'm I'm got the goggles on. Oh, you got a special uh, special <laughs> orthopedic no, no, you know, special um, prescription goggles so that I can see when I'm when I'm swimming. How so, much um, were they? Quite well, quite pricey. But why do you need them? There's nothing in a pool to look at. It's not like you're scuba diving. There's well, nothing. Well, hold just... on. Clearly, there is something to look at in a pool. Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't checking. Well, I was checking him out, but I was checking him out for for swimming tips. 
and he just mm. looked at me when I asked him, can you just watch me and offer me any tips? <laughs> and he just See, looked at me like I was just that's, mental. That is a, such a strange thing to say, can you just watch me? I don't know how you had the nerve to do that. Well, I, it was innocently motivated. Well, I know it's innocent, but what a strange thing to go up to someone and- But what with the civilization are we living in where we can just ask our fellow man to help us out with our full <laughs> crawl? But we're in a society where we can't. But you know that. It's a strange thing to say. But, I, but sometimes it's nice to just think, no, do you know what? I'm not gonna fall into the trap of I thinking agree. he's immediately gonna think I'm gay or but that I'm chatting him up. I'm just gonna ask him to do me a favour. There's nothing wrong with that. What if he said, yeah, it's just good, yeah. Um, do you mind coming at me with, um, my plastering? You'd have said, no, I can't. But it's not the same. He's in the swimming pool. He's yeah. there in the pool. He's swimming up and down. He's, you know, yeah. it's not no skin off his nose to just offer a bit of kindly advice. If your car's broken down in the in the middle of nowhere and someone drives by, you know, it's a generous thing to do. Just stop and maybe look under the bonnet and help them out. I agree, but I don't see how it's any different. Yeah. You know, all, and in the end, he did, and all he asked was that I wake him off. <laughs> 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 no, he didn't. I'm joking. <laughs> That's the jingle for Rockbusters, um, a quiz which I don't think anyone enjoys. I mean, Carl doesn't enjoy writing them, we don't enjoy listening to them, the listeners from the emails are just not interested, so don't know why we bother. <laughs> but anyway, right. here we go. Last week's clues, go. Uh, the first one, it's, it's a uh, cryptic clue, just in case. No, the stop saying cryptic, because they're cryptic not cryptic. Clue with initials of an artist or a band. Mm. You work it out, you know, you send in the answers. Mm. Right, the first one, the initials were SC, right? Um, and the cryptic clue was, uh, I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Mm. The fella making the food, he was, he was there each time. Okay. Right? So you gotta think about it, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, just tell us uh, the answer. What is he? He's, 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 not, he's a cook, isn't he, if he's making the food yeah. and that. Mm. He was there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's the, mm. it's the same, same cook. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what have you got there? Same cook. Same cook. Sam Cook. Sam you cook. said same cook. Yeah, but if I went, uh, uh, what, the way I look at it is, if someone went, if I worked in a record shop- The way you shop, look at it is, if it, I worked you in get a record shop, shop and someone came in and said, have you got Sam cook? I'd go, yeah, sure, he's in the jazz section or whatever. Right, the second one- Bollocks, that is bollocks, that one. Go, in, go into that woman's store and rip her off, right? So what's a store? Shop. Right? If you're ripping someone off, what are you doing? Stealing. Uh, another way of- Conning. Right, okay. And what, what, what is it? It's a shop, it's a woman, so what, what am I saying? What's the initial? C. Con shop. Right. It's, it's a woman. Connor shop. Corner shop. There Corner you go. shop. So Steve worked that one out. Well done there. Um, the last one. Uh, I'm stunned. You've had a go at laying down a track, but yeah. it ain't perfect. Go on. Mm. What's that? So a track yeah, is. Yeah, what's the initial? E. Okay. So you've had a go at laying down this track. Yeah. So when you're laying down a track, it's like a, it's a, it's a mix, isn't it? Yeah. You've had a go at doing it. You've just, just, you know, it ain't perfect. Yeah. So you could say it's a, what's another word for not perfect? It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a... Oh, Shit. Bit of a, like, that's a bit rough, isn't it? It's a bit, a bit of a rough mix. It's your, your rough mix. Your rough mix. Your rough mix. I've, I've never heard of that band. <laughs> that's not a band. Annie Lennox, isn't it? Your rough mix. So, uh, your Candice, rough mix. Candice Morris in, in London, uh, got them. I really don't know what to say. So, uh, sign picture off you to her. Uh, oh, well, I feel embarrassed that we, that we're still doing okay, it. Okay, this, okay. Yeah, well, we're, we're jacking it in a bit. Should we just yeah. not, let's, should we just not mention it again like it never happened? Well, let's do monkey news next week. No, we're not doing monkey news. There's nothing going on. In mon I'd be doing it if there was monkey news going on. It's not going on. We can't do it. Rockbusters has to fill the gap. Are we doing this week's? Hurry up. CK. Depressing. Oh god, we've got this week's to come. I thought Fuck this was me. over. CK. Fucking hell. Do you know the, uh, the songs that you sing at Christmas? That bloke who sings them is, is brilliant at it. Right? CK. Second one. MG. I told the homosexual man that oh. the grape tree was mine. What? I told the homosexual man that the grape tree was mine. And what's the initials? MG. Right? Okay. Bit of an easy one. And, uh, I asked you, if you believe in Father Christmas, right, what would you say if I asked you? The initial is S. Is that specifically Ricky? Um, we might as well keep it as, as Ricky, yeah. I asked you if, if you believe in Father Christmas, what would you say? 
So have they, have they got? Is there any prior knowledge? Do they have to guess what I'd say? Well, they'd know. It's obvious what you'd say about it. Oh, this uh, is so bad. So it's, emba it's an embarrassment. This. Yeah. So it's a little quiz. Leave them thinking with that for the for the next week. Right. What are you going to learn about next in? week? Podcast at rickyjace.com. Just send them in. Embarrassing. Don't bother. If they're shit. Right. Well, that's about it for another week. Um, it's the end of number five, number six next week. Um, keep coming to rickygervais.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll keep you abreast of things that are going on. We've made a little video, haven't we, Carl? That we might pop up there. And uh, we've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. Well, you can now get all 12 episodes of the first season uh, on iTunes. And I think that's a, a two or three quid in England or um, five dollars or so, I'm not sure. But you can get those now, all twelve. So, uh, for me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. This is Audible. Hello, welcome to number six, the final episode in this season two of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. You can still go and get the archive. All 18 episodes we've done so far that's available on iTunes and audible.co.uk. Um, and there's a little video diary we've done, a little free podcast. We may go into free podcasting, but in video, Steve. Uh. And there's a little free taster up there. Um, so check that out, uh, go to rickysraise.com to find out all news and everything. But, come on, let's get on with this episode. We're, we're here and now. This is right, yeah, absolutely, here we are. Good, Carl, go. I've got some bad news to start off with straight away. Um, the world's oldest tortoise, a 250-year-old tortoise, died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a like a flashback of of your life? <laughs> <laughs> you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever, you let, like see you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know. I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say you, know, you never guess what's happening. <laughs> No, but there's, there's loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's, that's weird, that's, that goes to show that we've been around before, or... No, it doesn't. There's none that, I have no evidence for that. Of well, reincarnation. I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes? Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close, it's the next, next thing next to flashbacks. It was, um, <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and, uh, my mum had, like, run the bath and that, and, uh, she said, is that, is that too warm? And I said something like, no, it's, it's all right, this, it's a lot better than when I used to have a, have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire. <laughs> okay. And she was like, what? And I said, you know, well, it happened years ago. And she was a bit like, oh. And I, I can't remember that now, but she talks about it and, you know, that just goes to show that. Because I, I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. Well, you... I didn't know about wooden baths, so why would I have invented that? But Carl, we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So... She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just, just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark I and his wooden bath when he was No, around? I don't want to go there, because that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of stuff, rubbish. isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff There's might you no discover? scientific evidence. No, just like I've said about family trees and that, don't, don't be looking at them, because you you're only going to find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, isn't it? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If, if, you, if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it, because your family would be shouting about it. If he was a bad one, you'd go, oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees, and it's the same. Don't be looking back in your past lives. Because <laughs> God past knows lives. what you've been up to. Well, Carl and the wooden bath. Proof. If Carl Wilkinson uh, live on air talking shit again. <laughs> but this this tortoise. So if that's and also its flashbacks would just be uh, you know the same wall. I mean it basically spent 
<laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so, uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, How can't, can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl, I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't know that's the point. Well, not really, but, oh, um, yeah, it's just But, but better speaking. ones, in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right, aren't right. they? If they can live 250-odd years, our, our art can't do that. Right. Which is what I say about our tortoise has got it right, in a way, that it's, it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out. That's just, you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. Uh <laughs> It eats healthy, doesn't it? It eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So that's that's probably doing it right, but to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. Just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does, is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no, I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, are they? They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right. And then, and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be bothered? You don't, uh, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah, another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just... It's would just, you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you or are you controlling the brain? I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did something that. went an onion, was it yeah. Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion, that's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready then, to go and get the well, rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear then from it nowhere, was just like, it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves, it's cold out. Yeah. Suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So you what I'm saying is, it was, in, the, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing? But who's in that's charge? just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and then you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, your, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's, it's, it's doing I, it, If I it? sat in a room with nothing, 
not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that there's two yous. It's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this, and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are- you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think I then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, like you, Rick, I'm always uh, annoyed and embarrassed when we have to concede something to Carl. And it seems though each week I look on the emails that we've got and once again someone has found some evidence to support some of the nonsense that Carl has come yeah, out with. Okay. Now you remember we were talking about his concept of putting a giant mirror on the moon because we, why should we have to go into space? Then we could just look up at the moon and right. we'd see the earth reflected back at us and we'd think, ah, that's the earth. Isn't I it can't great? see myself backing down on how ludicrous this is. No, indeed. Although, um, someone, I think they're really being very picky. They were picking you up on a technical point because I think I think one of your um, criticisms was the idea that the er the moon is moving and thus the mirror would you know be absent from view for some time. Uh, although people have been claiming that the the, the moon uh, we, there's always the same face of the moon that's that's shown to us. There's always the same side of the moon is always visible to Earth. That's when they talk about the dark side of the moon. It's not but, but, just but, light. It's the fact that we can't see. It's the other no, side. No, but of the moon. we move, so it's not always present. To well, no, but it would it would it would always be present to someone on Earth. Yes, I know. Well, th this is the thing. These people don't know what I know. I know that Carl is thinking of looking up there and seeing himself <laughs> looking back. That's what he's hoping. Like when you're going, going along in a car and you see a, a shiny building, you go, oh, that's my car. <laughs> yeah, and you wait. Yeah. That's what he's hoping to see. He's not doing it to gauge the speed of light and think and change like that. He's not doing that. He wants to look up through a telescope and wave. Yeah. That's, that's what they don't realise. I know what he's thinking. Do you want to respond, Carl? It's got- uh, the problem with the moon is- <laughs> Here's a statement. The problem with the moon is dot yeah. dot dot. Yeah. The problem with the earth is there's too much water. Yeah. No, the moon, it's been- been around ages, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's got no history. It's got nothing to show for it. <laughs> Just a load of old rocks and stuff. Yeah. And for me, history is created by stuff happening on it. So really, the moon, even though it's old, in a way it's new. Because it's untouched and that. But uh, we don't go- we don't go to the moon to visit museums <laughs> <laughs> or arcades. No, but- but say- say- say like Henry, Henry, Henry the Eighth, right? Uh, you watch Antiques Roadshow or whatever and some woman goes, Oh, this plate you've got, this was, uh, Henry the Eighth's. Uh, and y as you can see, you can see the knife marks on it. Uh, oh look, there's some chicken on it, right? And you go, oh god, yeah, that's amazing. Then someone goes in and goes, Here's a plate of Henry the Eighth's, but it hasn't been used. It's still in the box. You'd go, well, it's not as good that. <laughs> no, it's got no, no history. No, because very often on the Antiques Roadshow they have Henry the Eighth's plate with a bit of chicken on it. <laughs> they kept that. Don't throw that away. Why? Arthur Negus are like that in a few hundred years time. No, but do you understand what I'm saying? Things are only good if stuff's happened on it. The moon. You're up there. You're having a look. You're going. No one else has even been here. It's but you go to the moon for research purposes, for scientific there, research. Steve, this what do you what mean I'm there's saying. nothing there? They're examining the soil and the environment soil, yeah. and the air. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a lot. Well, they're not doing that. They're just they're just not doing that. Well, well, they're not, are they? Because last time they went, oh, they were playing golf or something. There's golf balls up there that they've been whacking about. What sort of research is that? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing up there. So wh why why else would you go all that way and go? Oh, nothing here. Fancy a knockabout? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they knocking golf balls about if if there's really important stuff to look at? You don't see people in museums going, fancy having a knock, uh, knock some golf balls about? No, I'm looking at this vase. All oh, right, that's interesting. But on the moon, nothing. Nothing to look at. What other games have you brought? That's what I mean. <laughs> Carl, have you ever seen the programme Inside the Actors Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions which is based on a French 
series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions. Many people will be familiar with them. Just interesting to see what your response is. And you know, answer them quickly. You don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite word? Uh, I don't think I've got a favourite, because you only use them when you need to, don't you? I don't just go about saying the same word. So, uh Well, alright. Yeah, it's not my favourite, it's just that it does the job. It's, it does the, the necessary job for that time, doesn't it? It's like, how are you? I'm alright. It's a greeting. What about, um, I think serendipity was voted England's favourite word. Never used it. No. Stupid word. Who decided that? I don't know, it was a poll, but I was suggesting things. I'm, I can't believe people coming up going, um, favourite word, <laughs> serendipity. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So, yeah, but, yeah. but the thing is, say if it meant, oh, I'm fed up, would it still be the best word? Is it based on how it sounds and how it's put together or what it means? I think both. everything. But then loads of words are being left out on, you know, which are probably brilliant words and they're not getting a look in. Such as? Uh, well, like that one, fed up. I'm fed up. It two, sums two it up, doesn't it? Well, two, two, you know. Uh, it just sums it up. When someone goes, how are you? You go, I'm fed up, me. Sick of it. It's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> are we getting to it? Come on, to us, some of your other favourites, bro. I've had enough. It's just all stuff These like aren't words, they're <laughs> phrases. They're <laughs> all negative, they're yeah. all whinging. These aren't, exactly, these aren't words. What's your favourite thing? My favourite thing to do is moan. Yeah. That would be the, well, it's not one word, it's loads of words. Fed up, sick of it. Ah, oh, enough. Ah, oh, <laughs> jeez. Whinge should be your favourite word. Yeah. Whinge is a good word. I like NGEs. Mm. Lozenge, <laughs> whinge, flange. Yeah. What is your least favourite word? Uh, it might be serendipity. <laughs> that would be up there for me. I tell you what, that would be up there for me. Uh, probably like on? French words that have made it into the English thing. Blamange. Just, just. There's a munch. There's an unge there. <laughs> yeah. So you know. How would you dislike it? How would you dislike a blamange? <laughs> but just, just you know, as if we haven't got enough words in our books. Go on. Because I, I was thinking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Alf alphabet, right? Why have we got that many? When other countries get by, without that many letters in it, we got more words than any other yeah, languages. Yeah, well, well, but that's because we got more the more letters. Well, I don't know. So that. if we've created a headache, I reckon you could at least half it. Well, you probably could half it. Well, you only use about half a dozen of them. No, but stuff like an X, you look at words that have got X in, and they're always words that you go, "What does that mean? How's someone come up with that?" <laughs> <laughs> That's how it comes across to me, and it, there's loads of big words, it's like dinosaur names. It's like, well look, nobody was about when they were knocking about, so let's, make up, some, at least. let's make up some names for them using the letters that hardly get used. They've all got Y's and X's in them. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah! That's what I'm saying, it's like, well let's use it for that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you just, it's not so much what is your least favourite word, you just don't really like just, most just, of the words. Just, say, just cut down the words, stop adding, stop adding new words. I get by, I don't know how many words there are in the world, but I reckon I hardly use any of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this year's word must be podcast. Yeah, but That'll it's- That'll be in the dictionary and, uh But it's made up, innit? It wasn't here before, it's just another one. This is what I'm saying about- But what else would you call this? You know, just there broadcast. is a new concept called podcasting. There yeah. is a podcast. But it's also a broadcast. We had a word for it. It's still a broadcast. Yeah, but they go, oh, you're a broadcaster. Oh, what, what radio station? No, I don't work on a radio station. I, um, I, um, I do a radio show, but I don't understand. Well, I do a radio show and I upload it and I don't understand. It's called a podcast! Done! Here's another idea. Go Add on. a new one, get rid of an old one. Last one in, first one out, or whatever. Do it that way. That's a good way. What would you get rid of then? So, we've brought in podcast this year, but what, <laughs> but what uh, word would you lose? Well, uh, what's the name? Those birds that died out. Dodos. Get rid of it. <laughs> if the bird's gone, the word can, surely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost profound. Oh, it's amazing. It's great. Oh, God. What turns you on, creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Uh, learning. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Learning. Excellent. Learning Will stuff. you say that? Yeah, but I, I've, I, everything you teach me, 
I take it in, it's just that sometimes I go, I don't, I don't get it. But that still counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it doesn't. Learning is, uh, the knowledge is, uh, the, there must be some sort of retention. You can't say I've got a great memory for a second. <laughs> you can't say that. You're, it has to stay there. And then, then knowledge has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. You can't just have all this knowledge that isn't applicable because it's useless. I mean, trivia is useless to a large extent. It's not real knowledge because it, it doesn't really help you in, it, it, it practically. No, but there's a lot of that going on. You're always reading stuff that you go, I've just read that, it's got me thinking for a minute, it's not going to help me in any way, but it gets a reaction, doesn't it? Well, that's good, yeah, that's, that's, that's what, yeah, that's, that's that's what, what art I mean. does, and yeah, sometimes education's good for its sake, if it really does inflame, but... But then sometimes, like I've said before, you can know too much where it gets you down. Go on. Uh, I just was reading something about an octopus, that's, that's like a killer octopus. Mm -hmm. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> you, whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of, uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, what do you mean? Well, just, just, you know, when, when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> But this one that's on the- it was- it was your fault, really, cos you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. there's, uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Uh, yeah. and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that, but that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gozzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one, you don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff, it can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it, I haven't gone near it, why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um, I don't, I don't think I, I do anything like that. I just, I think people can tell by my face when I'm like fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's. But it you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh, but she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? She really annoyed well, you. Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she'll, she'll, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, so that sums it up, but I don't, I don't really... Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, isn't it? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've t you, you know I know I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it, and th that's, that's... What would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing, you were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say, well, though? well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, you knobhead. I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> you kick it and call it a knobhead <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh, God. Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. I don't know what you're you saying. fucking, fucking cunt no. of a mollusk. I'll just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> That's downloadable as a ringtone.
<laughs> and it's also the jingle for Carl's Diary, just reading excerpts of Carl's Diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet. Didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle. Why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. Well, that's just that's, learning their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why have <laughs> you can't Wait a minute, one. I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. And when they say, well, why do you like him? Yeah, why you, do you, you like, just why, run away? Well, I, I noticed you put, um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and they said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, the old name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers? Without going, can you spell that for me? But I don't know what else point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go. Can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're from a different country and a different era. Yeah, I know. But the names I've been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go. Well, ancient Rome. Just just <laughs> Rome. It hasn't changed, has it? Rome. So it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. The same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that, if you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line, go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, it again. Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a with with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh, which is to, who am I talking to now? You or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay, but is this you or your brain I'm talking to you now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using, are you gonna, are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it, or is it, is there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line, cause- I, you I'm said capable. you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that's the place to start, because every, every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> right, I okay. wouldn't watch any race. The brain definitely hasn't been used yet. No, is this you or your brain you're talking about now? It was... I'm just saying about me. If I was on holiday, yeah. and Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road, yeah. I'd go, well, let's go keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Lazo, yeah. I'd say, well, hang on a minute, every s race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them, because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? <laughs> I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what not do you think really. of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what, but I wrote down three of his. That one isn't my favourite. That was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well, if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, I didn't send you away. You went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. <laughs> I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> that was one of the greatest conversations I've ever been a part of. I mean, that was incredible. Never mind.
find Aristotle and Socrates. That was oh. incredible, that. Um, if someone's out there, could they make a transcript of that? Because I think that, you know, in a thousand years' time, that'd be amazing. That was incredible, Carl. And not once was the brain used. <laughs> the jingle there for Rockbusters, the, um, one of the most hated quizzes in the history of mankind. Joking, aren't you? The people loathe it. Uh, they're loving it. Well, well, it's the last one anyway, so just get over, just do yeah. the answers. Hold on, we can't do another one though, because we can't give the answers out, so this just... Yeah, this is the last one, it's just the answers for last week for people who are doing it. Okay, right. well, small mercies. Um, the first one that I gave you last week was, the initials were CK, right? Yeah. Uh, the clue was, uh... Do you know the songs that you sing at Christmas? Yeah. That bloke over there is the best at singing them. So what's what? What the songs you do? Carol King. Carol King. Right. Yeah. That, that works. Yeah. That works. Fair yeah. right. Well done. Uh, the second one, MG. I told the homosexual man that the great tree was mine. Right, MG. Gay. Yeah. Marvin Gaye, obviously, Marvin but, Gaye. but how do you get I to Marvin? Know, what's it? That's my what? my vine, isn't it? That that that. I told my, you my vine gay. Yeah. My vine. Yeah. And the last one. <laughs> my vine guy. That's shocking. It's, it's, well, the last one, it was. Shit. The last one, the initial was S. Um, I said, uh, I asked you oh. if you believe in Father Christmas, what would you say? What's, what's the name for Father Christmas? Santa Claus. Right. So if, if I said to you, do you believe in Father Christmas, you'd sort of go. No. Yeah, but. Yeah, but what, what's his name again? Santa. Right, so what would you do? You'd go, oh, Santa. No, I don't... I don't. That's it, that's what you do there. you go, Santa, nah. Santa, nah. Santana. So that was, that was the last one. Well done, said Bob <laughs> in Yorkshire. Got all three of them right. You'll get a little sign picture. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. That's the end of season two of Ricky Gervais Show. Uh, we're back soon. Check out Ricky Gervais dot com for information and upcoming news there's a free video cast we're doing um uh we're also um, bringing out a book of the podcast uh, yeah that'll have a lot of the um the best conversations we've had with carl and i think there have been some of them in this show and uh, carl has illustrated all his points and his memories to, to i mean that he thinks that's proof victorian evidence so i mean it is the ramblings of a, a maniac but you can pre-order that on um amazon um uh well Thanks very much. Uh, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Bye. and Carl Pilkington. Bye.